The Guangdong province in China was originally inhabited by an ancient group of tribes called the Hundred Yuai people, also known as the Bai Yuai. They had established dominance in the region during the first millennium BC and were not integrated into China until the Qin Empire. The empire did not enforce heavy regulations on the indigenous people, and they were able to maintain their cultural heritage and background until the Han Dynasty, in which they were forced to gradually assimilate to mirror the Han society, though some small cultural enclaves still exist to this day. The destruction of the Han Empire signified the assimilation of Guangdong province into the Wu Kingdom, a remnant of southern China that had established itself during the age of the Three Kingdoms. Guangdong, along with its sister province of Guangxi, would be unified together to become what is called the Lingnan Circuit. However, this unification would eventually change during the Song Dynasty. Large remnants of the Han Empire moved southwards in great migrations during the Jin, Tang, and Song Dynasties. The huge influxes of people were beneficial to the sparsely populated south, as they experienced large periods of growth and development which would impact their future involvement in world trade. More people moved south during the Mongol invasion. These people, largely Han Empire loyalists, would eventually be defeated by the Mongol leader Kublai Khan. China, including Guangdong, would firmly be controlled by the Yuan Empire that the Mongols had established. Guangdong continuously went through name changes and label swaps. What was established as the Lingnan Circuit during the Wu Kingdoms would be changed to the Guangnan East Circuit during the Song Dynasty. And finally, it was renamed once again to the modern Guangdong Province during the Ming Dynasty, solidifying its name and designation up until present day. Guangdong's Hong Kong would become a crucial trade port during the 19th century. Vast amounts of European trading goods entered the port city in order to change for Chinese luxury items. The British specifically traded opium to the Chinese. This caused Guangdong to grow incredibly fast as a province, but the opium that was traded to them was having a disastrous effects on the population. Soon afterwards, the Chinese Empire would place trade embargoes on the British and other European countries in order to protect its citizens from the dangerous drug. Hong Kong was a crucial trading location as for Great Britain and a war ensued in order for trade rights. The so-called Opium War resulted in a loss for China, which included the secession of Hong Kong to Britain and Macau to Portugal. Afterwards, Trade treaties were enacted upon China, and the Chinese were forced to endure the substance entering their market, specifically Guangdong, really. The province would later also be the hub of the Taiping Rebellion, and the center of the anti-Qing movement led by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. This passionate rebellion against the imperial dynasty would eventually overthrow the Qing Empire, the last dynasty of China. The people of Guangdong are considered to be natural-born revolutionaries which stems from their culturally saturated history and tendency to be the prime location for significant events. Agriculture was the dominant economic foundation of Guangdong province up until the late 20th century. An increased desire for manufactured goods and a spike in urbanization in the province has led to a decrease in the amount of farmable land in the modern age. However, rice is still grown in large quantities. Most of the farmable land that is currently available for agriculture is being used constantly at around two to three harvests per year. Though, the average amount of rice accumulated per harvest is much lower than the average of China. This is because the fields are almost constantly being used, and the nutrients in the soil are much lower than other places. Guangdong is currently relying more and more on chemical fertilizers in order to keep up with demand. Industrial and fruit crops are also grown in Guangdong, though the output of these two categories is crucial to China's economy, unlike the rice it grows. Guangdong produces the majority of China's sugarcane and a significant amount of its rubber and palm oil. It also grows over 300 types of fruits, including bananas, lychees, and pineapples. Guangdong is a heavily coastal province and catches nearly one-fifth of all the fish produced by China. Profit from selling nearly 400 different types of fish accounts for a significant amount of the province's GDP. The discovery of minerals in Guangdong sprouted a large involvement of the Chinese government in provincial activities. The metals developed a shipyard, petrochemical, and steel manufacturing industry that still lasts to this day. Along with the manufacturing plants, Guangdong also focuses lightly on textile production and food packaging, though this is on a much smaller scale. Recently, electronics and technology industries have taken root, and the province has become one of China's hubs for digital technologies in the modern era. Car parts, pharmaceuticals, and paper are also created here, but those items are focused almost exclusively on exports. Guangdong is almost completely linked by the Pearl River. Water trolleys transport items and citizens from up and down the river quickly. Seaports are also used for transportation, both nationally and internationally. 
There are well over a hundred ports, but the largest are Huangpu, Zhangjiang, and Shantou. When considering land transportation, Guangdong has an unusually sophisticated highway system, with most highways and railroads running north to south. The province facilitates most traffic moving from north to south along the coast, and serves a primary point for mass transportation of manufacturing goods traveling from coast to province in the region. China's expanding air traffic has also forced Guangzhou's Baiyun Airport to undertake expansions to accommodate a large amount of foreign and homeland planes. Guangdong is largely ethnically homogenous. The vast majority of the Chinese citizens residing there hail from Han origin. The Yao, Zhuang, and Shu are the largest ethnic minorities, but they take up a minuscule amount of the population. The homogeneity of the ethnic backgrounds does contradict the prevalent amount of languages spoken in Guangdong. Cantonese, Hakka, Min, along with Mandarin, are all spoken in this province. However, Mandarin is still spoken the most by a large majority. In some locations, the traditional regional languages are still spoken quite often and used in official communications by the local government. Different dialects from ancient tribes of the Baiyue are still commonly heard in rural, ethnically diverse areas and are even taught in schools in some cases. The majority of citizens that are religious in Guangdong practice ancestor worship though all of the major religions have influence and rooted in the area. Some citizens, especially those who aren't Christian or Muslim, aren't loyal to any religion whatsoever and often go to different temples of different religions as needed. 40% of Guangdong citizens live in villages along fertile areas in the countryside. They are mostly besides bodies of water. Larger towns and cities are also located on rivers, canals, and the most populated of which is the Pearl River Delta. The province is considered by Chinese standards to be highly urbanized, with some cities reaching a population of over 10 million. Shenzhen and Guangzhou are the largest cities in Guangdong. They are both located along the Zhujiang River estuary and are large port cities partially adjacent to Hong Kong. Guangdong has been steadily rising in population since the early 20th century. It has nearly doubled in size over the last 40 years mainly because many rural Chinese citizens are coming to port cities looking for work. Around 60% of Guangdong citizens live in these cities, and most of the rest work on farms in the countryside. Some people are seasonal workers and migrate to the port cities looking for factory jobs for a small period of time before they proceed to return home. Guangdong is primarily vast, green hills cut by rivers and small streams. Altitudes of the hill peaks range from 1,500 to 5,500 feet, but in most locations, they do not go higher than 2,500 feet. Many valleys run northeast to southwest, spanning large parts of the province. Farms are usually housed near the valley's end in locations where the land is flat and fertile. The Nan mountain range separates Guangdong from the Yangtze River, as well as all the cities that are located on it. In general, the province is considered to be beautiful but humid. Guangdong is considered to be a tropical or subtropical region, Throughout the year, the temperature consistently ranges from 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees. The high temperatures and long summers allow for double rice crops to be grown. The province lies on the Tropic of Cancer, but does not have a true winter, rather a very long summer, 10 months in the southern regions and 6 months in the northern. Guangdong experiences an astonishing amount of rain, around 60 to 80 inches per year, with the majority being on coasts and regions of high altitude. The province's tropical nature and abundance of rain allows for it to support a large amount and variety of fauna. The less tropical north houses a large number of evergreen forests and grassy hills. The south is composed of vast swaths of streams and rivers, laden with lush forests and large beaches. Camphor trees and bamboo groves dot the landscape in large quantities, as well as various Asian oak trees. However, a constant destruction of the environment by human hands has led much of both the tropical and subtropical regions to deteriorate, especially along the coasts. The true original forests are located in the mountains, where they cannot be reached easily. Soil erosion, due to farming, has left the ground in fertile areas without many nutrients. This causes the surrounding plants to suffer as well, since they are unable to find resources required to survive. Luckily, Major afforestation and soil rejuvenation plans are occurring currently, and some of the wildlife has returned. Animals in Guangdong are plentiful. Tropical mammals dot the landscape. Reptiles such as Chinese pit vivers and pythons can be found in southern tropical regions. Birds such as pheasants, peacocks, fowl, and pigeons are also commonly seen. 
Guangdong used to have a large number of bigger animals, but human progression has since driven them out of the area due to deforestation and urbanization. Guangdong is divided into 20 distinct municipalities. This was originally established in the 1950s, but is now nowhere near the same as when it was initially proposed. Areas with many ethnic minorities also have their own autonomous government directly under Guangdong's administration. Each municipality has multiple districts below it, and counties are housed within the districts. Healthcare is available at the local level and can cure basic ailments. More serious issues, along with specialized doctors, can be found at district levels in dedicated hospitals. A gigantic spike in cleanliness and health standards in the 1980s, filed by an influx of new hospitals and clinics, has led to the eradication of many diseases from the area. A college dedicated specifically to Chinese traditional medicines has also been built in Guangdong. Acupuncture and herbal medicine are offered there. Education has been continually improving since the mid-20th century. High illiteracy rates forced the municipal governments to implement more schools in rural areas. Recently, many preschool-level institutions have been opened up, offering easier access to early education. Higher education opportunities at Guangdong include Sun Yat-sen University, South China University of Technology, Jin'an University, and Guangzhou University of Chinese Medicine. The province's rich culture is widely recognized as highly distinctive. Guangdong is praised for its two unique types of opera, Yue and Chao. These have been performed for hundreds of years and are popular among the Cantonese and Fujianese people. Puppet plays are also commonly seen, but the ones in Guangdong are abnormally large, with puppets often reaching over four feet in length. The cuisine native to the region is considered to be one of the most popular in the world and one of the most distinctively Chinese food groups. Fresh ingredients, fast cook times, and sparing seasoning are the figurehead monuments of the Cantonese food style. Lineages are very important to the families in Guangdong. It is not uncommon that a village will consist of a single or few families, most of which stay with their kind once they come of age. Because of the importance of lineage, bitter feuds that last generations are quite common and vendettas between villages are almost universal. Guangdong has an abundance of tourist attractions, the most popular of which are the Jiaoxing Lake near Jiaoqing, Mount Danxia at Runhua, Mount Xiqiao at Nanhai, Dinghu Mountain at Jiaoqing, the Ancestral Temple at Foshan, and the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall at Huanghua Gang Park in Guangzhou. Finally, Guangdong has some unique and expertly made handicrafts, the province is known for its rat and shares, ivory carvings, fireworks, and ink slabs, all of which are recognized and reveled across China.